I'm gonna try something that I've never tried before. This is a brake hub, rear brake hub off of a Triumph uh, late 60s, I believe. Although these were the same for many years. Uh, and I'm gonna try to turn it on my lathe. Now, as you can see, this thing's got some pretty heavy pitting. I haven't even measured this thing yet to see if we're within tolerance because I just want to see if I can get this pitting out and uh, see if it uh, this is it, if it's a viable option to do. Most brake drum lathes, I believe, turn about 200, 250 RPM. The slowest my lathe turns is 500. So. This might be a little interesting, however I got a way to hold this on there so I'm not going to worry about it flying off and I'll show you that. Like I said, I have not measured this yet, I don't know if it's within tolerance, I just want to try this and see if it works. If, it, if I can get these pits out, then we'll measure it and see if it's even usable again. This is, I believe this is cast iron, but it may be cast steel. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. It's called a dual cast. Uh, it does have a part number in it. It is W1498, which I can't remember right off the hand. I think that's 70 or 711498. If you don't know about Triumph part numbers, they did change. They took the letter designation off and changed it to a number. But anyway, let me get started on this. I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this machine surface where it's gonna mount to the chuck. And I'm gonna do that with a little roll lock pad. And that's uh, it's a kind of a heavy scotch brite. It's actually kind of worn out right now, but that worked. We got our machine surface back, kind of cleaned up a little bit. As you can see, it's now flat. It's, the chuck is only going to mount just right in this area right here, around the holes, so I don't need to clean up out here. And uh, let's get it on the chuck. So here's my setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this to the jaws. We'll tighten that up. And then I've got a draw ball, draw bar through the middle that I'm going to pull that down on. That way it won't come off. It won't go flying off. I made a spacer. That will go We'll go there, and then I've got another draw piece, another block of steel that'll pull that down onto the draw bar. Let's get it on there. Stop fiddling around with it and talking about it. All right, let's see it spin. It looks good. Now, if you're looking on this end, it does look like it's out around, but that's just because the draw bar is a little bit off. Uh, actually, it's spinning pretty well. Let's get a... boring bar in there and take a little cut. So one thing I had to do was make a little cut right here on this to get back far enough in the corner. Uh, I'm running out of a little bit of room and and how far I can back this up. Now this brake hub is about eight inches, so that's quite a bit on a small machine like this. As you can see, the chuck's only four inches, so. Let's try this again.
that gave us. Just starting to go through the rust, looks like. All right, let's take a little more. Took a lot of rust that time. Still see some pits, but I'm also starting to see the original turning. But I still see pits in there, so it's got to go farther. Like I said, I may not be able to turn the pits out of this and it still be within tolerance, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, I'm not using any uh, lubrication on this because I believe it's cast iron, but how it, if it's cast steel, I may want to use a little lubrication. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of flex in that bar, which I don't like, but see if I can use a little bit stronger bar. See if I have one that'll go a little bit, uh, that'll go as deep, but I'll bring you right back. Okay, I got a little shorter bar. It's a little bit thicker as well, I believe. And I'll show you this little bit of modification. I did right to the end of it right there. So you can see that. Just so it didn't have that sharp point on the end, that'll help me get in a little farther back. So uh, let me put it in the holder here and we'll see what we can do. See if we'll get it uh, stop flexing as much as it is. At least take a little bit out of it. Somebody asked me about these, this Bowstar Quick Change tool post. Uh, it's been really good so far. The one thing I did do, the first, first thing I got it was change all these. These are now U.S. set screws, <laughs> or at least higher quality. I don't know if they were technically made in the U.S., but they are higher quality than what was in there. Uh, I didn't have one actually strip out on me, but uh, I've heard uh, horror stories about them. Kind of tricky working around these cameras, but I'm trying to get you some good shots. All right, let's... Touched off again. Take a small cut. And I'm going to take a little bit more than that. It's Four thousand. Two thousand aside. I'll take a three thousandths per side. Let's try that. Now you're probably saying to yourself, why is he babying it so much? Those pits are obviously ten thousandths deep. And that one right there could be twenty thousandths deep. But like I said, I've never done this before. <laughs> uh, this is about the heaviest thing I've swung on this lathe. So I just don't want anything bad to go wrong. Let's do uh, 10 thousandths overall, 5 thousandths aside this time. I'm 
starting to see steel chips instead of rust. But I think you can see, well, maybe not. Well, now you can up in this other camera. You can see this area right here, it's really deep. Uh, I'm really impressed with the surface finish though. I would have no problem running this. Uh, obviously without that pitting in it. Uh, I think once I make a finish pass on it, it's going to be even better. Uh, so, you know, 500 RPM, this is more than... As far as I know, it's, it's twice what these things normally run at. And I'm going at it slow, obviously, but... Uh, I'm going to take uh, another two or three thousandths, see how much more I can get out of that. Actually, I moved it and it said five, so we're going to take five thousandths aside. Maybe we'll get into that pit, pitting. Starting to get through some of it. Still seeing quite a bit. There's a big section right there. That hole right there has got to be 30,000 steep. There's no way I'm going to save this. But we're going to keep going until we get it. Then we'll measure it and see how close we actually are. Big cut this time. Alright, I'm going to take a spring pass and uh, I'm going to call that done. I'm going to use just a little bit of lube on the spring pass or a little bit of cutting oil. Now this time I'm going to retract the tool too as I get to the end of the cut and pull it out so I don't get the back cut at all. It's the same settings. Oh, nice front finish. Perfectly acceptable for a motorcycle hub. Still got one little hole. I'm going to take it off and take a look at it. Hopefully that's focused in there. Very nice finish. It's it's not completely smooth, but I've never seen one of these that's completely smooth. I <laughs> uh, got a little bit of rough right at the inner edge. I'm not sure what was causing that, but uh, a little bit of sanding to take care of that. The big problem though is this pitting right here. I think you can sort of see that. It's still still kind of feel it with my thumbnail. Although, most of the rest of it is gone. In fact, all the rest of it is gone. I don't see any other, except for that bit right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure this. Uh, I'm gonna look up what the tolerances are. If I'm still near tolerances, I may try to get the rest of that out. If I'm not, well, it was, a, it was an exercise. It was a test to see if it can be done. And I definitely think this is doable. 
Okay, the spec on these is uh, 0.179 to 0.190 or 4.54 millimeters to 4.83 millimeters. I've done these a number of different ways and basically that's what I get, which is 0.147, which is quite a bit under, that's 30 thousandths under, it's actually a little over 30 thousandths under. So, they're not reusable, they'll have to be replaced, of course, but I kind of already knew that. They were pretty suspect in the beginning. Uh, and I would not have run them with those big old pit holes they had in them. Anyway, so, and we still have a little pit hole in here, which is just gonna, it's just gonna diminish your braking capacity. I mean, you could run it that way with the pits in there, but it's not a good idea. It's a hot spot. It's going to wear your pads down real quick and uh, eventually your braking system is just not going to last as long. It's not going to be as efficient. So, uh, hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe for more. And uh, we'll see you next time.